um, and they are dragon bishops. So what is a dragon bishop? A dragon bishop, we have to remember, still moves like a bishop, but also moves like a Chinese horse. And a Chinese horse can move like a knight, but cannot jump over pieces. So let's have a look here. At the moment, um, okay, so the pieces are in the corner, so that's always a little bit difficult for development. Um, but otherwise, so we'll have that bishop there, or dragon bishop on f4. It's attacking the dragon bishop on g6, right? But funny enough, that dragon bishop on h3 is not directly defending that dragon bishop on a 4 because that dragon bishop cannot jump. However, after dragon takes dragon, pawn takes dragon, the king can take, because the dragon on h3 would be in the um, And the queen wants to develop his dragon on g8, We saw a lot of that yesterday. Um, I wonder if that's what you guys have today as well. Um, and then opposite side casting we did not have. So we had uh, queen side casting with a king staying in the centre. <laughs> today um, I'm quite curious to see um, what we are in store for. Um, but yeah, so far everything is just developing nicely. Um, the pieces are well coordinated on that side. Sometimes some positions, you know, it's a little bit tricky, but I think today the players are off coordinating the pieces quite well. And the time control, of course, is 15 minutes aside, and um, I think it's five second increments. So five second increments over there. And then um, what we do have to note is that our players at the moment, uh, these dragon kings, they are both international masters and they have both reached, uh, well they've um, surpassed the 2000 rating in Paradigm Chess and they are the two best Paradigm Chess 30 players in the world. They are on top of the log over there. Um, so that's I am Min and I am Watu Kobisi as well. So Watu from South Africa and um, Min is from Hungary. So it does look like he is aiming to castle queenside again, perhaps. And um, I mean, always keeping us guessing. <laughs> but um, he wants to attack that dragon, I would assume, over there on um, f4. Oh, so I see there in the chat we have it, it is actually 15 minutes aside with 10 second increments, not 5 seconds. I think that 10 second, second increment is great because when it comes down to those last few seconds, the dragon tactics are intense. So I hope you all stick around to see those, those moments of adrenaline rush because they happen with every single game. <laughs> so we'll definitely be seeing some of those today as well. And then you will also see a little bit later we'll be having um, WI Milik Megan Fanika joining us as well for some analysis and then also just talking about her own experience with um, Paradigm Chess 13. So it seems like uh, Watu is in deep thought there but he did drop the bishop back. Um, I suppose it, he needs to make space for that dragon bishop there on f4. But it does seem that he wants to come up on that side of the board. So it's always tricky finding a plan in these um, 
you know, early on in the game, and that's, I suppose, why these, these players are taking a lot more time than they did yesterday. Yesterday we were just breaking the ice, you know, excited to get into the game. Today they are playing a lot more patiently, and um, I suppose they are a lot more at ease, I would imagine, and are just taking their time finding uh, what they actually want to do um, in the game. I'm not sure if this um, bringing the queen out this early for both players um, indicates passing queenside. Um, it is definitely a possibility because if anybody castled kingside, I think kings would be too hot. <laughs> things would be too hot on the kingside, and one of them would run into trouble. So there we go, castle and queen side, fairly quick decision over there by, by Min, by M. Min. So what I must say about these two players as well, um, the one <laughs> shows a lot more expression than the other one. So what we can see when he's, you know, deep in thought. But um, I mean, seems to be um, quite composed through every single position. So that's quite interesting to know um, the different styles they have off the board. So I'm wondering whether Watu is going to keep his king in the center again and then just go for the attack on the castle king. Um, that's what we saw yesterday. He was quite comfortable to keep his king in the center. Um, although Min did come back um, fighting and in that last few seconds, like I said, when things get so heated, when there's so much adrenaline, he was able to come in with the, the queen and the dragon bishop with some beautiful tactics um, over there at the end. Um, but definitely Watu is pressing over here. Watu wants the win. Um, he is one point behind in this matchup. So um, we're going to have to see how he's going to follow this through. And of course there are no engines <laughs> as yet for this variant. So everything that these players are doing, they were not able to, you know, use computer resources for any prep. But luckily there's no, um, you know, concerns for cheating in this vegan because like I say, we have the two best in the world playing at the moment. I don't think they are going to be asking anybody else for assistance. And yes, there's no computer assistance either. So um, that makes it for some clean chess. Um, however, it does make it difficult from a commentating side because um, I don't have any assistance, so if anybody in the chat sees anything, please drop a message. If you see any plans, it's always good to see what everybody's creative side is telling them. But um, it does seem that... Um, I mean, he's quite comfortable in, in defending with this and in breaking open. So that's, that seems to be his style, is kind of like provoking and then he, you know, um, opens up a game somewhere. And this could be quite interesting um, because uh, Black's pieces seem to come alive after this break on e5, knight takes e5. So, because um, the dragon bishop on g, g2 is a little bit out of the game. Um, but let's see, perhaps he takes the knight on in the, in the center and that dragon livens up a little bit. But it does seem that black is controlling the center a little bit more. A little bit more than white. And I'm just worried that um, 
what um, what may have played on both sides of the board. So I hope it's not too exposed because there is now a file open in the center as well, um, which can make it a little bit tricky. But it's so difficult not to be this ambitious in, in this variant because, like I said, it is so exciting. It does bring a different dynamic. And of course, it eliminates the draw. It even eliminates the mentality of a draw because so many positions where you do have opposite color bishops, for example, or you have that bishop born endings, bishop versus knight, or any of those kind of um, theoretical draws, um, it's, it's eliminated with these dragon bishops. So I think by nature also you'll find yourself playing a lot more attacking when you are playing with this variant. Alright, so we do have somebody putting some analysis on this board. <laughs> That's a lot of arrows. <laughs> That's a lot of arrows. So I suppose there are just seeing how many pieces are depending that square on um, what's that G5. And then uh, looking at a potential rook here. But there's so much happening on this board because you are looking at place in the center as well. Um, but what's going to be quicker here? Who's going to get to who's king quickly then? a lot of time in this game it, um, I don't know if that indicates that he might be slightly uncomfortable because um, uh, yeah the dragon not the dragons but I suppose the the pieces are well coordinated for black I think white is still um, finding a way to to get his pieces coordinated and now with this massive center that black has it does have white thinking but perhaps what to is something is able to pull something um, out of his hat, he is the line of Africa. <laughs> he never goes down without a fight. And um, yeah, it's 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 always it's not easy to say who's got the advantage always in these positions because we, like I say, we don't have engines. But I do think Black is a lot more comfortable um, given the activity of his pieces and also just the time. If you are looking at the time, um, I am Min has over 11 minutes left, and Watu is already down to four minutes. So um, it will be interesting to see what what to play is next because he spent so much time thinking about it. Hmm. So he does come up with a look. But it would be interesting to see how Min follows this up. So I, I don't know, I'm thinking that those arrows are coming from I in Min. Um, and maybe just uh, indicating his thought process. Just looking at all the ideas on the board. at the moment I just don't know where this white king is going to end up if he moves at all but I would assume it have to move so that the other two can come into the game and possibly help on the queen side with some sort of attack um, I mean his pieces are all on the king side um, and that uh, king is on the queen side 
So it would be quite interesting to see what he's going to do. But I would think he has to make a decision because black species are coming for that king. So although that look on A4 is it does look like it can be a little bit attacking, but I would also say that it is slightly defensive as well because you are um, coming into the king's aid if anything happens there in the center. So for those of you who are new to Paradigm Chess 30, we do have a website on the screen as well, www.paradigmchess30.com. You can have a look there to see what the history of this variant is about. It was developed, um, you know, during the early days of COVID um, when, you know, people were not allowed to leave their homes and everybody was isolated. And in times like that, that's when, um, you know, inventors work at their best. <laughs> so they were isolated from everybody. And luckily we do have video call, video chat and so on. And they were able to, Craig and Craig Wallenberg and Lorenzo Fanica were able to then concoct this um, variant, which is quite exciting. So if you want to see the history of that, you can go have a look at paradigmchess30.com. We also have the um, Play Now facility on that uh, website. So if you do want to have a few games, you can just scroll all the way down to the bottom and we'll take you directly to chess.com where you then can experience this variant. If not for the first time, you know, for <laughs> the 10th <tenth> time. <laughs> That would be great. Um, so yeah, so if you want to have a little bit of fun while you are watching this as well, head on to paradigmchess30.com uh, to find out a little bit more. So I see this king is running towards the um, king side. So I'm not sure if he's, you know, he's not castling at the moment, but he is heading that way. Um, I would imagine he would again that might possibly be there for uh, defensive purposes because black has a lot of ammo here on the side. Megan, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? So there seems to be a little bit of uh, issues with the sound. I don't hear you at the moment. Can you hear me? Hello? So it seems I'm 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 losing I'm losing her there. Let me see if I can make a plan mm -hmm. on this side. So we're going to give that another try. But let's see what's happening on this side of the board over here. So Watu is taking more of a defensive stance today, um, you know, just really deploying his pieces. <laughs> so we have Chish Chopping. Chish Chopping. Hi, welcome to the channel. Hello. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, so what are those pieces? Those pieces are Dragon Bishops. Dragon bishops are, they move like bishops, Hi, but they also me? move like a Chinese knight. So they may move like a, a knight, but they can't jump over pieces. So at the moment we have the, yeah, dragon bishops. So at the moment, if you're looking at the, um, 
the, the dragon on G, G2, for example, that dragon can't jump over the pawn on G3, but if he had to move to G4, then you would have the square on A4 vacant. So a Chinese knight is from Chinese chess, and um, yeah, they move like a knight, but they cannot jump. They need the adjacent square vacant, and then they are able to move like a knight. So um, yeah, it's a combination of the two. <laughs> it's quite exciting. I would suggest you give it a go. It is on chess.com um, under the variant section. But if you are looking to get there easier, you can get go to the paradigmchess30.com website and you can click play now as well um, to find out more about um, it as well. Then um, you can also just find out some information on paradigmchess30.com. At the moment, you are watching uh, the two top players in the world, two top um, Paradigm uh, Chess 30 players in the world. They are versing each other in a eight-game match. So we have um, I in Min leading the match with one point, and um, Wataku VC has to some catching up to do. This is game two that we are watching. Yeah, so Watu is definitely under a lot more time pressure. Um, but uh, let's see what happens. So at the moment that black dragon bishop on d7 is attacking the dragon bishop on b6 but the dragon bishop on b6 is not attacking the dragon bishop on d7 because the pawn on c6 is blocking that movement. Yeah, you could say it's like the world championship match of this variant, definitely. <laughs> We've got the world's best players and also like I mentioned before, there are no um, computer assistant so there's no engines running to help these players in any sort of sense so this is all on them all the moves that they're making everything that they're seeing is all on them so they took that um, dragon bishop on on uh, b6 but of course uh, Watu, Watu South African yes and um, he of course knows that the bishop was under attack and was able to then take it back with the pawn. So yes, a little bit of history about I am Watu. So we have there in the chat that he is a, in an international master. He's been the South African champion many times. He's known as the Lion of Africa. He's definitely rated one of the top players here in the, the local parts. Um, extremely fierce, um, Watu Kubisi. And then we have I am Min as well from Budapest. He is, um, I noted that he has a rating about 2,600 in bullet. He is also or was at a stage the best in the world at duck chess and he is, has also topped the paradigm chess 30 log a number of times so they both have reached the 2000 um, rating barrier in paradigm chess 30 and um, so yeah they're playing quite often as well yeah so we, we <laughs> no federation yet no corruption so it's you know <laughs> not linked to any of those things we try to keep it as clean as possible but um you know messy on the board just messy on the board that's where we keep it we keep the mess on the board but everything else around this variant is pure there's no engines no cheating no assistance i mean i could say what i want and these players could be able to hear me but my moves are not the best <laughs> so <laughs> it doesn't matter who's assisting them i mean they're the, the top players here as well and I think what's so great is we're all still learning. It's still fresh, like Lol that is saying there. So it, it's amazing to be playing. Hey, this would be yeah, it would be cool <laughs> to have this in the online Olympiad because they, you know there's a lot of uh, iffy iffy things about the online um, chess world in general. So um, yes, I think that is something 
that's um, quite, uh, quite appealing about this vegan in the day and age that we are living in. So we've had a few trays as well. The pieces are coming on the board. Let's see if we can get vegan in as well. Megan is wanting to assist us a little bit with the analysis. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, Megan, can you hear me? Hello? Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Lauren, I can hear you. Hi, welcome. Welcome to Paradigm Chess 30, Paradigm Kings 2023. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, good, thanks. So for the viewers, this is WI Milik Megan Paniker. She's actually my sister, so <laughs> I'm quite excited to have her here today uh, uh, analyzing some of the um, games uh, of Paradigm Kings 2023. Um, so yeah, welcome Megan. Exciting to have you here. Um, have you been following the games? Is this your first glance at the games? Uh, this is my first glance, um, but I think the game that I'm looking at does look quite interesting. So I'm very interested to know what the score is, how, uh, what is the ranking looking like. So um, I must say we've had a lot of transitioning during this game. It did look like it was going to be a little bit more attacking with a lot more pieces on the board. Then we had a few exchanges happen and now it does seem a little bit calmer on the, on the chessboard. Um, but as for the overall picture of the tournament, um, we have I M Min with one point lead, so he's one to zero. Um, Watu hasn't won a game yet, but they've only played one game with an exciting game yesterday. Um, it looked like Watu had him against the ropes, and then in you know the the last few minutes usually decides the game. <laughs> so that's where all of that went down. Um, so yeah, that's the standings for now. So of course, Watu wants to come back with a bang. Um, but I am in also holding his own and he has more than five minutes on the clock at the moment and Watu is down to one minute. So that's what we have going on right now. We have Chess, uh, Chopin, Artin, Du. I know Salimu, Ruben Salimu, yes. <laughs> if we speak about the same person, Ruben Salimu, yes I do. He's quite a cool guy here in the Western Cape. So Megan, are you able to see the chessboard? Yes, I am. I'm just, um, there's a bit of a lag on my side, um, mm -hmm. but I am at the latest position. I think white just played queen to f to c3. Is that correct? Yeah, so queen went to c3 and then was followed by knight to um, d6. So <laughs> we have some, some, um, some comments here saying white is about to get rolled over. It did feel that way throughout most of the game. Um, I think it would be interesting to see this because now it is a normal chess game again. So when the dragon bishops come off and then we see normal chess games, which is um, why we've got to study our rook pawn endings <laughs> because a lot of rook pawn endings do occur and then we've got to have a look at those knights as well. So now what is opting to exchange queen? So this is 2, 4, 6, 7, 2, 4, 6. So that's a pawn up over there for, for black. So the exchange of queens did happen. I think um, what is hoping to go for simpler play because he's got a lot less time. But he does have 10 seconds um, increment on the clock with each move. Um, so yeah, Megan, any plans here for black that you would want to throw a span in the works for white just to, you know, give him that extra thought? Okay, so I see it is opposite side castling. Um, sure quite an interesting game that I can just jump into. Um, let's see, what about G3? Hmm. So at the moment he played King G2. So G2. I think, yeah, so, um, so yeah, that would be, I don't know if that would be the greatest. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so he's thinking G3 at the moment as well, but um, Oh, you're yeah, right, so you're right, G3, sorry I missed that. So G3 <laughs> and then you're thinking about pawn in the center then. Yep, definitely. And also mm -hmm. I was thinking of, um, if not G3, then maybe even D4, just opening up that E file for that yeah. double rook to enter on the second rank possibly. Yeah. some options um, that black can do. Yeah, I think black has a few options. Um, white has to be quite accurate here in his defense of this position, I think. 
Yep. Definitely. Oh, there's Calvin Class and Chess in the chat. In the chat, um, of course, that is not Calvin chatting. That is his wife, Robin, who is also our sister. Welcome, Robin. Hi, Robin. <laughs> Chess Chopin, where are you from? Are you from South Africa? Let's see, we've got somebody quite active here in the chat. Oh, he's from Jeffrey's Bay, welcome. Not, oh my goodness, you're playing with me, I'm not sure. <laughs> Okay, he's not from Jeffrey's Bay, he's from somewhere in, in the world. <laughs> Alright, so Lauren, you mentioned that this is the first game for the day. Um, the first game for the day, yes, second game of the match. We This is um, like a catch-up... Um, almost like a catch-up round because we did have a little bit of technical difficulties yesterday and I cannot tell you how terrible the timing was for the technical difficulties to happen because it was it was in the middle of critical moments um, but then we had some you know problems with power outages connection difficulties and so on so we have allowed time today um, to just get the, the second round um, out of the way and then we have the third and the fourth round scheduled after this as well. Okay, quite exciting. Yeah, so um, I am Min, his handle name Dragon B70. He is thinking quite some time. Yeah, yes, <laughs> it says here, chest chop and says Min fell asleep. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just get so deep in thought and you know. You, you might have two options and you, you don't know which one to choose and then you just kind of like fall into, you know, which one, which one, which one. And so you finally put G3 onto the board and now we've got a loop text. Won't take pics of that, quite interesting. Is, is this the first time that I am, mean is actually participating in this chess variant? Because from what I know or from what I've commented, I haven't seen him play yet, so this is quite interesting to see. Yes, yeah, so this is the first um, live event that we do have um, I am in participating in, but he's been extremely active online. So um, I think he's participated in some of the arenas as well, and then also just general playing he's been in of those, but he hasn't um, been in any of the Paradigm King series tournaments or anything like that. So it is it's quite phenomenal to have him here. Um, yeah. So now things are happening quite quickly over here on the chess board. So I do think, um, you know, what if we meditated um, giving the exchange over there because I think it was just going to be too overwhelming to with that GC. He had to he had to give up that over there. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, so let's you know, black should be better here. Yeah? It's just a matter of how he's going to execute this. So. Yeah, this is your standard Brook versus Knight in game. So let's see how the IM executes it, like you mentioned. So it will be quite tough here yeah, psychologically as well if what it does lose this game because that would mean it would be 2 0. Um, and but then at least we have another two games um, back to back uh, later on today after this. Um, which hopefully will we'll get him back. But also with that being said, the game is not done yet. So often we see so many changes in the in the last last few seconds. So we can never say it's over <laughs> until it's over. And and just out of curiosity, who are the other um, players in this arena? So our next two games coming up, who will be versing each other? Alright, so this one is a matchup between the two top players in the world. So that is I am Min and I am Watu. So it's just the two of them. It is a eight um, game match. So we have eight matches. So it was one yesterday, three today, two next week Friday, and then two next week Saturday. So Friday evening, next week Friday evening, and then next week Saturday morning as well will be the final. Um, final games of this match. 
hopefully it will be a tight match i'm hoping for a tight match i don't you know of course i am rooting for our south africa and i'm always rooting for south africa <laughs> you know when we're doing these things um but yeah i would love for it to be a tight match you know with games that are that are intense um and that's what we've been getting um the intensity but i think this one um you know black has just been i think black has been better for quite some time in this game to be honest yeah, no, by the looks of it, I think this is a, a, a different win for black. Yeah, I don't see um, why holding this to a draw. But also, I'm not an IM. <laughs> I, don't <laughs> I don't make IM moves as yet, so... Um <laughs> yes. I don't know what is white there. He's got an active king, I suppose, and uh, a knight. <laughs> But that look over there has now become passive and I think black just has too much. So at what point, obviously I missed like half of the game, at what point um, did all of the dragon bishops exchange on the board? So it was... Um it wasn't quick in the game, which was great. Um, and then I, th I think there was a lot of tension happening. I don't know, I would have liked to have kept the tension. Um, uh, but uh, then the dragons did come off, and when they came off, black was um, a little bit better. So I suppose that was the, 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 the best decision to make at the time. But of course, for viewing purposes and for people to see those, those bishops with the wings, and then, um, you know, we come in here and be like, what is this? <laughs> and then allow me to speak about this beautiful piece that has been created. Um, yeah, so, um, but now we've got a uh, normal chess. And that's also what's so great about this variant. It doesn't take away what we already have in chess. It only adds to the value of the game. So we are not trying to change the game. We are not trying to say, you know, oh, we want to replace this or replace that. We just want to enhance what we already have. And of course, you still have to know your your basics. You still have to know, you know, some advanced things as well. But you still have to be able to play chess to be good at this. Um, you can't just uh, start playing paradigm chess and not be a good chess player at all and start winning. I would say um, you have to be good at chess as well. So um, that's where you'll see your top players um, coming out there. But you'll also see some upsets. I've seen some upsets as well. I've upset some players as well, <laughs> which is exciting. I'm sure you've also upset some players. So um, I think it gives everybody, um, it's like fair, like, like equal grounds. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Interestingly enough, um, I actually haven't participated in a paradigm tournament. You know, I've commented on a few. Oh, you lie. Yeah, no, <laughs> I haven't played one. <laughs> but the looks of things, it looks intense. Um, I think if the opportunity does arise, I would definitely like to join. But definitely not like your normal classical chess. Your tactics has to be a lot sharper. Yeah. And you are quite tactical. Eh? I, and I think I played a paradigm game against you over the board. I think, I don't think I've played it. Possibly online in the arenas that we have going. Um, the arenas are on Thursday, Thursday nights. I think there's an hour and a half arena going every Thursday night, which is great. Um, so I've met you there, but you're not in an event. Um, mm -hmm. But hopefully there will be many more events. In fact, there is a live event coming up in March, mid-March. So that is going to be open to all players, a live event in Cape Town. We are still waiting for the brochure to come out, but I... Hopefully can announce that next week when the brochure and all the information has come out. Um, there will be a live Paradigm um, Chess 30 event happening in Cape Town and hopefully we can see some of you turn up at that as well. So yeah, um, Chess Chop is saying, yeah, isn't the look and pawn ending a win? I believe so. I believe so. So I'm imagining you would... I'm not sure. I'm. I'm I'm imagining he would want to give the, the rook back to the knight and just say that the rook on ending is winning. I don't know if that's what he's saying. <laughs> but um, I believe this is winning for black. Yeah, I mean, I would just, I, I don't see why not rook takes knight, then pawn takes, and then you are a past pawn on the queen side. So I don't, I'm not sure why we wouldn't go for that. But then again, the rook on the h file could be tied down. Mm. 
But then again, this is where it comes in, your root pawn endings. You have to know your root pawn endings quite well, because what would make this position simpler? Would it be simpler if you had to trade that rook for the knight? Or would it be simpler with the two rooks on the board? Um, so that's always always tricky, but it's always important to know. Um, but yeah, maybe we get some upset. That's what happened yesterday, and in fact, that's what happens in most of our um, Paradigm Chess 30 games. We get some upsets yes so initially we had the time reversed <laughs> white had a lot more time and now black is in fact under time pressure so i'm not sure what is what is going to happen from here on out and it's going six seconds and <laughs> it's like i think it takes the night so i think that makes it simpler just to just to do that I just hope black doesn't run into any trouble here because of the time. Because Watto has managed now to, to build up the time. I, I suppose he's been in time trouble long enough to now adapt to being in time trouble. And uh, <laughs> I am in just, you know, he just started getting into time trouble like 5 seconds, 4 seconds, 3 seconds, 2 seconds. My goodness. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> he got his 10 seconds extra and it is absolutely crazy. But he is... He's a top player. I think he, he should be able to handle this pressure. And I did mention this before, but um, he is a bullet, a, a strong bullet player as well. I think a, a rating of 26, uh, 2700. So um, 2600, 2700. So I don't think his heart is racing as much as ours when he sees like five seconds. He's like, I can play a whole game in this. Yeah. Time. Like, what's what's happening? <laughs> White is holding on for dear life. Yeah, but now he's got 13 seconds, 12 seconds. It's like, how do you even play a game like this? Luckily, there's no dragons on the board. Yesterday, we had dragons on the board with this time control. It's just crazy. But now, I suppose with the normal check, these guys have had experience with this um, time pressure before, so it shouldn't be that bad. But I think if the dragons were on the board, and hopefully we'll still be getting games like that with the dragons on the board um, with this time left. Mm, I wonder what's going to happen here with this time. So, yeah, so Lauren, how would you um, proceed as black in this position? No, I think white just um, released the pressure over the end and allowed um, black, some black to get in there, rook takes rook and then four oh, takes and okay. other things. So I think there should be, there should be one. Yeah, I just push the pawn, and pawn takes any pawn pushes, whatever happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, this is, yeah, this is just, never mind the rook pawn endings, you need to know your pawn endings as well. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is just, just winning for, um, for black. Winning for black. Yeah, so we're, all, we're always going to see what you're coming up with all of these things, but I am mean is not giving him any, any kind of counterplay. Uh, so we there also have what is the prize fund for this. I'm not sure what the total prize fund is for this. Um, I will find that out. Megan, do you perhaps know? No, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe if you could, if you could possibly find out Megan on paradigmchess30.com over there at the event. If there is anything there, okay, I will try to get you know. Get into contact with the organizers. <laughs> Four Cadbury bars. <laughs> I don't think um, White would be playing on if it was for Cadbury bars. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think I uh, want to. Yeah, what to what to do that and. Even uh, well, well done <laughs> to I and me. Well done to I and me.